Welcome to Kujo Sound. This is Unity and Wise Integrations. Hey, and welcome back to Kujo Sound. This here is Wise and Unity Integrations, and we are going to take some further looks at some of the footsteps that we did in the previous episode. Now, if you watched the previous episode, you might know that we made some footsteps and added them to the animation of this character, and we can walk around, as you can see right here. It works all right, but what we have going on right now is that it doesn't work when we sprint because it plays some sample wrong and that sort of thing. So we'll fix that by adding some sort of RTPC control of how fast our character is moving. We'll take a look at it. Check this out. This is, this is normal running. You can actually walk if I use my Xbox controller instead of just the arrow keys. but. We are just going to stick with running and sprinting. And notice how the sound goes when we're sprinting. And this is even though there are no sounds or animation events connected to the sprinting animation. So something is clearly up and something from the running animation is clearly still being triggered. There's something in the beginning of this. So let's try and solve that problem. What I want to do is that I want to go into our character animation script here because we want to be able to control that there are more things going on than just the left foot run. We need a left foot sprint controller as well. So let's take a look at that. Here we have our character animation script and right now we only have left and right foot run. So let's go ahead right away and make one called FS character sprint left here we go and we are going to make another one called fs character sprint right like that and what happens in here is that we actually want the exact same things to be triggered in here so it still triggers these events here but let's copy paste these left foot sprint right foot sprint in that way we will have two more options so that we can change our event names fs character left foot sprint let's call it that left foot sprint if we save now then back in unity we should be able to see that we now have the option to add four event names instead of the two that we had before so once it started it's finished loading as you can see here in the corner and it's done compiling, we can now pick these four event names that we have here. And that is really easy to do. So now we have here left foot run, right foot run. So let's call it left foot sprint. And here, right foot sprint instead. So that we know that it's calling the right event name whenever this happens. So in wise if we press a five so we can go into the editor and see what is going on we have left foot run right foot run so let's create the two new ones that we have right foot sprint and well right foot sprint and this one is right foot sprint so we have now have left foot sprint and right foot sprint they do point at the same container over here you can see if we press press on it then it plays this so we go back into Unity, and in Unity here, we want to go to our project, find our locomotion, and go to Sprint, and here you will be able to see the events of Sprint. And you, as you can see here on the timeline, there are none, which is very similar to the one that we had before from when we were running. So, let's, this is left foot coming in so we take this name here this is sprint left foot and in the object that we need it to be in we need it to be in character animation events double click on that and that's it apply and now we find this here left foot and right foot so we create an event here right 
Now, notice how that this animation is longer than just one cycle, probably because he sprints four steps at the same time that it takes to run two steps. So, we need to continue here. Left foot. Here we go. And right foot. Here we go. And we add it like this. Now, the problem with this is that if we put this into the game and we start running, it should trigger the correct events and you should be able to see that it triggers left and right running when we're running and left and right sprint when we're sprinting but it'll still trigger the extra run event when we are sprinting so you should be able to hear three sounds some sort of glitchy uh, jumpy kind of sound so if we go into wise again press f7 build our sound banks we can go back into unity now notice what happens when we play our run and sprint events and check out the what's wrong with it. This here's running. So now let's hold shift and start sprinting. Ah, not too good, huh? How can we solve that? Well, there are lots of ways to doing it. Uh, what I want to do is, because we need to be able to control that anyway, we need to find the rigid body of our character. The rigid body is the element that controls that this can interact with anything. So our third person controller here, as you can see here, it has over here in its inspector window, it has a rigid body. And in that way we can control it. So I want to create a new script and we are going to call this wise character speed. So this character speed here is this going to send a global RTPC, which is the character speed, so that we can pick it up wherever we want. We'll go over how that works later. But to begin with, we have our script here. And what I want is I want to know this current rigid body. So let's say public rigid body. And we'll call this the character. And I need a public float which is my speed of character, so that I can control that. And I need a public string called RTPC speed of character. And actually I want the game to know that this is always speed of character in case I want to change it. So now that we have added this, we should be able to see the float value of the speed of the character and the RTPC that we named this name right here in Unity. Once it's done compiling, as you can see here in the corner. Whoop, there we go. And the rigid body, what is the rigid body? The rigid body is our third person controller. So there we go. We drag and drop it over here. So now it knows that it needs to check this rigid body. Let's go back into the script and see what we can do about that. We want down here on every frame speed of character is equal to character as you remember that was our rigid body and then you have this call here called velocity dot magnitude. There we go. So now this public float value is equal to this rigid body's velocity magnitude, which means that we will get a number. It's kind of, it can be kind of arbitrary, but it goes between zero and something, depending on how fast this rigid body is actually moving. So what about we say ak sound engine dot set rtpc. We want to set the rtpc called rtpc speed of character, comma with what value we want to set it to speed of character. So right now, on every frame, we define that the speed of the character is equal to this rigid body, which is our third person controller's velocity. And we set this RTPC to be the value of this. Now we need to go into WISE and create this RTPC. Let's go ahead and do that. We go into WISE, press a five, we find our game sinks, game parameters. Let's create a new work unit here that we call locomotion. And under it, we are going to create a new game parameter. And this get parameter is going to be called RTPC speed of character. Let's say it goes from zero to 
12. I guess that will be, should be enough for us to do that. So if we save that. Now, when we play this game, this parameter will have the value at this, at, which is the same speed of our character. Let's try this out and see if it works. While we're running, you should be able to see the speed of the character down in the right-hand corner. Right now, it's really, really small because we're not moving. But as we start running... So when we're running, it has a value of about 3. And when we're sprinting, it's about 15. Uh, that needs to be smaller then. How can we change that? Well, up here in our third-person controller, we have this third-person controller script here. And right now, it's set to be free running speed which is 10 we should change it and have it be at 7 because we want to stay within 12 about it and also looks better yeah so now it's about 10 or 11 whenever we're running or sprinting that's fair enough so how can we do that well, the funny thing is, let's say we take these footsteps here. These are triggered by left foot and right foot run and left foot and right foot sprint whenever we are either running or sprinting. So we could say that this here is now called footsteps run. And let's duplicate that and make one called footstep sprint. The reason why we do that is simply because then we have... This is more expensive because they're using the same assets but we can change the values that we wanted to. So now we have double control. So let's say right foot sp sprint the event here now calls the respective footstep sprint over there and the same one with this one here. So now we're triggering right foot sprint. Let's say if we go here and say this is pitch up really hardcore. You can hear it's, it's, it's sped up. But if we go with right foot run, it triggers the other container, so then it should be back to normal. There we go. And of course, this sprint here should not be sped up like that. So, and that's one way of doing it. So now we have controlled that our, when we're sprinting, it only uses these events. And when we're running, it uses the other events. Good. So up here, we could say, because we know that when we're sprinting, he runs, he sprints at around 10. You can click RTPC, add a voice volume, and you click here and you say which game parameter you want to use. We want to use the speed of character. We reset this here to be zero. And we know that we are, when we're sprinting, it's about 10. So we could say if we are above, let's say, 9 then this one is silent. So now our footstep run sound will not play because it's muted when our character is faster than 10. So let's try this out. Let's uh, build our sound banks, F7, generate the sound banks, go back into Unity and play. And I think that we can already say that right now it works. It plays left foot run and right foot run when we're running, left foot sprint and right foot sprint when we're sprinting. And the excess event that was there from the run should now be muted whenever we're sprinting. Ta-da! The event is still there, but it's being muted. That's one of the problems with animation blending because we cannot control that. That is something that an animator needs to control. And sometimes it's really impossible to control. So you need to figure out a way how to mute things. And I know that a lot of you will watch this and go, but that's, that's not how they do in AAA games. They don't do hacks like this. <laughs> oh yes, we do. Oh yes, we do, trust me. These are all over AAA games. It's not the prettiest way of doing things, but sometimes very late in the process, there is a bug where there is a sound playing. You just hard coded like this and wise that things are not working like that. Let's run around and enjoy this environment for a little bit. And that's it for this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. See you next time.
Thank you for watching Kujo Sound. If you want to know more about game audio, Unity, and Wise integrations, please like this video if you enjoyed it and hit subscribe if you want to know more. Or head over to patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel and the time I take off to create all this material. I would really appreciate it. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Kujo Sound and Bjorn Jacobson signing out.